Hey everybody, it's Aquila, and this is a Lefty Knitter Podcast, episode 67. My name is Aquila, I am the host of this channel. <laughs> it's weird. You can find me in the links down below on Instagram as Aquila to Hun and a Lefty Knitter Podcast. You can also find me on Ravelry in the podcast group, a Lefty Knitter Podcast. So, today is Tuesday, the day after Memorial Day. It's the 26th, May 26th, 2020. Elephant in the room. It is done, 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 done. Oh, so right behind you guys is my window to the backyard and little Z was saying that she stuck her whole face under the water, so. <laughs> yes, I'm done work. <laughs> Sorry. This is the Sorel sweater, and now I feel really bad because I don't have the name of the designer, but all my links are down below. Links to my Ravelry groups. I have not taken finished object pictures of this yet, but I wove in the ends. Pause. Okay. I had to pause and unpause because my little one is out the window screaming. <laughs> very loud and you could probably hear it. So, I have finished. It's by Wool and Pine, I believe. So loud. All the unnecessary stuff I could cut out, but I do not do a lot of editing. If you've never been to this channel before, I try to record a few times a week. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's just once a week. Uh, just to update you on the things that I'm working on. Now, this Sorel sweater, lots of drama with it. It is done. Excuse me, I am wearing shorts. It's hot today. Ta-da! It blocked out really nicely. I feel like it fades really great. You see a little bit of uh, where the colors change there. Not terrible. And the block, the back blocked out really, really well. It had this weird pucker right here that blocked out. So let me tell you about the yarns I used because this will be the last time I talk about it as a actual object object. This is now finished in my husband's eyes. The ends need to be woven in before it's completely done. Understandable, but as a knitter, the knitting's done. That's like all psychologically, I'm done. I am done. So let me tell you about the yarns I used. So, I didn't bring that bag. Pause. Again, unpaused. <laughs> so, I could have had this pattern in front of me. Again, this is the Sorel. I made size... 74. Oh, God! That was probably really loud. Whew. My husband kind of gave me a heart attack. I don't have the first page, I guess. This is terrible. I made the fourth size. Whatever size that is. That's what I made. Oh, bust. 42 inches. That's the size I made. Um, I am very close to a 42. I know it's supposed to sit, um, fit pretty close uh, with not much ease. So it calls for four colors. I didn't do that. I had three that I really liked. I knew I was going to do cropped arms, not a cropped body because I don't really like cropped tops. So I made it work. The arms aren't as long as, well, for cropped, they're probably perfect. Um, so the mohair that I used was by Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And it's her floof base. So there's her label. I should just take it apart so you can kind of see the whole label. There you go. And the colorway is a semitonal and it's called soot. And it is a 7228 Kid Mohair Silk. 
459 yards of lace weight mohair yarn. I used two and a half. Well, I don't know how much is left of this, but I definitely needed more than two. I thought I was going to be able to use just two, but I, I couldn't. The other three colorways are as follows. If I can remember which one is which, that would probably be helpful. I'm not going to remember. So they're all Hawthorne fingering. Some of them are tonal hand painted, which is the home sweet home. Or sweet home, sorry. Uh, Andromeda speckle, which I believe is the top colorway is Andromeda speckle. And then Woodstock. Um, again, I'm really terrible. I'm not quite sure. I have to look on my project page to know which is what. This is the, that speckled one. That's definitely the speckle. And then this is probably Sweet Home, which is tonal. And then Woodstock is probably the color that's in the middle that has the green. It's a lot of green and purple without the pinks pops and the bottom is definitely the channel where it's all purple. I do not have any of the second colorway left at all because I had split that skein into two after I finished the body color changes, split it in two and knit as far as I could in the sleeve and then started um, fading in the third color and knit as far as I could with what I thought I had left. Now this is what I had left after I took off a couple rows of the body after I had to rip it out. That's okay though. So there it is, Sorrel sweater. It is very, very warm. I really love it and I have just a bra on underneath of this and I feel like I could wear this um, just this way. I think I would be more comfortable if I had um, a tank or a cami underneath of it because of the mohair. Never really knit anything that went on my body that was mohair. I've knit one hat that had um, mohair, but it wasn't the same blend. So they're all gonna feel a little different, I think. I mean, I don't think they're all made equally, right? So it's just like, you gotta try it and see if you like it and see if your body can adjust to it. And I think if you wore it more, your skin would get used to it. So I'm gonna change out of this because I am very warm. I hope to get up some finished object pictures of me wearing it eventually, but it is, it's just really hot. So it might end up just being pictures of the sweater itself, me not wearing it. I know it's really good to have those project pages with people wearing the actual sweater. I like seeing people and looking up the size I'm looking for and seeing what it looks like on their body because not everybody's body is the same shape and whatnot. Um, so it's really nice to kind of see other people that might have the same shape as you wearing that size. So yeah, I think it fits really well. I'm really, really in love with it and I actually can't wait until it turns cold again so I can wear this out somewhere and show it off. <laughs> Bam more comfortable. Wearing a Doctor Who shirt. Love Doctor Who. I haven't watched any of the newest to newest season, but that's okay. The other project, I didn't want, um, I didn't show you guys the sock on a blocker in the last episode, and I think it looks really great on a sock blocker, so I wanted to show you guys. I posted a picture of it on my Instagram, so you can check it out there too, but I think it looks really, really good on the sock blocker, because it was just like a, a flimsy mess when I was showing it to you the last time. That is beautiful. This is, uh, I always forget their name for whatever reason. It is the Double Miner by Hip Strings. Hip Strings is the yarn company. The other, you get two skeins, matching skeins. They can, you can knit them the same way. So you can go the same color to the opposite color on both socks. I've decided not to do that. And I have cast on with the green for the cuff at the top, and I'm going to knit it the opposite direction. Um, another trick that I do that I know a lot of people do, I put those little light bulb stitch markers every 10 rounds. It really gives me clarity of where I'm at and how far I need to go. And it's, it's a really good push, like it, especially if you're using a yarn that's not a self-striping. Because a self-striping, you can be like, just to the next stripe, to the next color, to the next color. 
But if it's not like a, a yarn that changes like that, where it's distinctive change, having those markers really is like, whoa, I've done a whole nother 10 rounds. Man, I, I did a whole nother 10 rounds again? Oh, and you just keep going and going and going. So I am doing those on my nine inch circulars. You guys know I love those. The last project I'm working on is my three color cashmere cow. And I am down, I am two, <clears throat> excuse me, there is two more sections, a lacy section, a stripey section, and then the ribbing, and I'm done. I am done with the color that had all those breaks in it, and as I was knitting with it, I was having so many issues of the yarn breaking. Um, I, where plies were already broken, and it felt like it was just going to really break apart, and it was really frustrating. So, this is the three color cashmere cow, again, Ho He Locatelli. So there is, you know, you do this whole first section and then you have the stripes and then you do this bumpy textured, textured section. This is the yarn that I was having so many issues with. I have a few spots in here where I had to cast like break and, and fix it. Um, and then this is the start of the last, not last, second to last section before the ribbing, which is lace. I have to do uh, three repeats of that and I'll be done. This yarn, I explained in the video a couple episodes back, I am not blaming the yarn company whatsoever because I don't think they would have sold it if they there was that many issues. I had like five balls of this of the one color. <clears throat> Actually, it's this one. Um, so it's Bayou Spun and I like their other yarns have been really great to work with. I haven't had any issues. And these were gifted to me, so I don't know what kind of condition they were when they got them. This is a limited edition Yak Down and Camel Down, and I think that's probably part of the problem, because I think those are just not as a stable of a yarn. That's the, the, the tan color. The other two are just um, Yak Down and Superfine Merino. Tw uh, 75 Yak, 25 Superfine Merino. And that's the green and the chocolatey brown. So I'm very close to being done that. I really want to just get that done. I ordered yarn for John's sweater. So as soon as that comes in, that's going to be like the next thing I cast on, even though it's like practically summer at this point here in Maryland. I'm from Maryland if I didn't say that. Maryland. Oy, boy, okay. One more thing I want to show you, and then I want to talk about a knit along. So I <clears throat> started, I have a shacked sidekick. I started spinning this last May, May 2019, and it just sat. So I spun this bobbin and I was like, oh, I probably spun half of the fiber because I remember splitting it in two. I didn't. So my plan was to make two singles, one bobbin and the second bobbin, which is now full, I've spun it all. It's a lot more on this bobbin. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it now, but I do want to ply this sooner than later. Um, I'm very excited. I'm very, very, very excited. Cause this whole bobbin, I split the rest of what was in this bag to fade it from light to dark, which is not, I'm not gonna be able to spin two plies like that now. Because this was just random. I was just pulling from the braid. So if I spun this and this, I'm not going to get enough of this. What I'm thinking I might do, since this was light to dark, and this is pretty light. A lot of it's very light. I'm not quite sure what's inside, so it might not be as light as I think it is going to be. I think I'm going to Navajo ply it. Not Navajo ply it. I'm going to two ply it. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna two ply this as one whole ply. So I'm gonna put it on, I have a um, Andean tool, an Andean plying tool, and that's what I wanna show you guys. So I wanna show you guys that in a video. So I probably won't get to this unless I record a little bit later today. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put this on my Andean plying tool and make a two ply out of it. So I'll have the light and the dark going together and then they'll eventually all meet up at the medium
colorway, which is fine. And then I'm just gonna attach this as a two ply also, and it'll just be crazy. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna come out. I don't wanna do a three ply. I know I could do a three ply and have the light to dark work with this, but then what am I gonna do with this? So I think this was one third and this is two thirds. So I probably could do a three ply and do end to end on this mixed with this and do a three ply. Again, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. Didn't tell you what the fiber was. This was gifted to me by my friend Emily who has now moved. She's moved away, it's very sad. This is Into the World. I believe this was like, she used to get a ton of fiber as clubs. So I think this is what this probably was. Um, and it's a super, super wash BFL. And the colorway is called a Musing Antidote. So there's that. Okay, real quick. So I had this idea for Knit Along. I don't know when it came to me. And I didn't know how to exactly pull it off. But now I know, I, I, I put polls out there on Instagram. I have some ideas from, I got some ideas from people. I'm gonna do this as a two month knit along. It is starting on June 6th. So the day that I put out my next episode, you'll have a whole week before the, before I put out this episode, I should say, you will have one full week to get your colors ready, get your projects ready, whatever you want. It's gotta be a new cast on. I'm giving you two months and I'm, estimating around 75 grams of yarn. I just don't want you to knit one little baby hat. So if you knit an adult hat and a baby hat, that would be one finished object together. So approximately 75 yards or 75 grams, excuse me, uh, for your finished object. Now, the theme is your birthstone. I think that was a cool idea. I was thinking of doing it as a 12, a whole year knit along which I still might do starting January, 2021. So keep an eye on this channel for that. And you would knit with the color of the month. So for this uh, knit along or crochet, I am not, whatever you, you know, knit or crochet, totally fine with both. Um, 75 grams of yarn approximately. And if it's a small object, do two together. I would prefer it to be I think I even made, now I can't remember my rules. The rules are in my podcast group. 75% of the project being the color of your birthstone. Now, I also put on the rules, the colors of the US and the UK because they vary a little bit. Um, I pulled it from Wikipedia. They also go by Zodiac birthstones and whatnot. I was like, nope, just doing this one. It's your birth month stone birth stone month whatever <sighs> now i've just been talking too much so my birthday is in may which is emerald and i have a ton of green yarn now i just got to figure out which project i want to make so i really hope to see some people join in on this knit along the hashtag i will try to remember to put here if i watch the video <laughs> it will be Hashtag birthstone cal 2020. I think that's pretty simple. I'm not gonna probably do drawings from Instagram. It's all gonna be Ravelry based. So I apologize if you are not on Ravelry. Um, come back. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna pull pattern prizes probably from the chatter thread, which will be a separate thread. And then there will be a finished object thread I've contacted two local dyers and I'm gonna do gift cards from those dyers as your gift for finished objects. I will have two. I'm doing this because with the virus, I feel like all the shows that have been canceled, I wanna help support people that are local to me, people I've met in person. I fully support, you know, I want to support their business. So. Also, it gives you a chance to pick what colorways and what bases you win versus me just picking something and sending it or, you know, whatever. 
So they will be $40 gift cards. One from um, Rising Tide Fiber Company. They're based on the Eastern Shore here in Maryland. And then um, Fully Spun, which is Brooke, and she is out of Northern Virginia. I believe it's Northern Virginia she's out of. So, yeah, you, you should go check out both of their shops. I'll link them down below so you can go check out their yarns. They're beautiful. I have a bunch of yarn from Rising Tide Fiber Company that I need to knit with that I have in my stash. I also did a So Faded sweater with one of their colorways that I absolutely love. It was a like an orange. It's beautiful. I love it. <sighs> so I just want, you know, to just support people in my community, right? So I feel like it's a win-win. I'm supporting them and you get to pick what you want versus me picking the prize. So, um, so yeah, go check out both of their shops, check out their Instagrams. I'll try to remember to link both their shops and their Instagrams. If not, I'll just have one or the other, or, you know, you can get to both from either their website or their shop from their Instagram page. So really excited. I already had people posting in the chatter thread because I put them up. So yeah, go check it out. And that's all I have for right now. So the next thing I really want to show you guys is this. So I got to find my Andean plying tool. I think it's in my yarn cabinet. <laughs> okay, I put my, this is my Lazy Kate holds three bobbins. <clears throat> I've put my one single on here and I'm gonna show you guys. This is my Andean plying tool. It is 3D printed. This part comes out here, like this. And it's made by Turtle Maid. I'll link their shop below. So it's gonna probably be a little hard to show you guys in the whole frame. So I'm kind of reaching. <clears throat> so traditionally you would do an Andean bracelet by taking the yarn and wrapping it around your middle finger. This is meant to be like your middle finger. So, um, sorry, I keep moving this. I'm trying to just find the most comfortable position to actually show you guys. Okay, so I had to watch videos because I don't do this very often, but you, the, the Andean plying tool is to help you make like a center pull ball so you can ply end to end, one end to the other end of your single. So you take your single, you put it here, you always go around the back, opposite, then down and around. And you always go opposite, back down to the same side, and around the back. So you're never crossing the front here. It's always up, opposite, down, around the back. To the other side, opposite, to the front, around the back. Now it's, it's really hard to show you guys, so I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna wind it up, and then I'll show you the finished wraps. Okay, so this is now all of my singles. This was the front. You can see nothing's going across the front. Here's my other loose end here. Um, so yes, this is the front, the two loose ends. You'll end up taking this pin out and it'll bake one big loop if you've done it correctly, obviously. And then this is the back. You can see I went around the back. It's not crossed here at all. Um, so this is um, one of the older ways of, I think, in, like, possibly Native Americans may have um, 
cooked on this. The other way uh, you could do a two ply from a single strand that was on one bobbin, you could uh, wind this onto a ball winder, which I might do, I'm not quite sure. With a ball winder, like when this comes off, it's gonna kink up, it's gonna scare the crap out of you and you're gonna think that you've done it all wrong, but it is gonna make one loop and then you just kind of put it over your wrist and then you um, ply from those two plies, those two ends. Like I said, the other way is from a ball winder, so then you would have a center pull. This is the same kind of thing, you'll have a center and an outside. Um, so with a ball winder, you would wind, like this has a lot more on it and I might do that on my ball winder, wind it onto that and then do a center pull and ply end to end. That way you're using every single inch of uh, your singles. Uh, if you were to just ply this and say this together, I know I'm going to have more of this and then I would have to um, put the rest somehow onto an Andean bracelet or onto a center pool to ply the two ends together and finish my my single into a two ply. So there you go. Uh, I may video taking it off and showing you guys the start of um, plying it. Okay, so I'm always nervous doing this and I've only done it once or twice. So I'm gonna take this off and show you guys. I have my two ends right there and right there. One and two. So you take this off and it's gonna be hard to take off. And they tell you to wrap it as loose as possible. Well, this didn't come off as hard as I thought it was going to be. So you take that out and then you take this off. Now I could kind of leave it on here. There's ones, tools out there that you can leave them one um maybe i will i don't know i'm not quite sure um but like then a piece together board. oh no pretty cool i just no uh, <laughs> and my husband's Sorry. talking nope it's okay and i've lost my end there it is and he's making lots of noise so there's my two ends and then it comes off like this. I think I'm gonna keep it on this and I'm going to put it on the floor and ply from these two. Okay, so I have my leader set up and I'm using one of Hazel's boots. You can't see it. Uh, <laughs> her cowboy boots. And I put the Indian tool in there and I'll be able to pull up the plies. <laughs> I know that's but if I had something that I could put it in, I would do that. I've, I wasn't sure about taking it all the way off of the tool. So I'm just going to put my two ends in here. Get this ready. And I'm going to go the opposite direction of what I spun my singles. So I'm going to take my... Pulling it in. Oh, it's not pulling it in great. I'm gonna have to fix this. Okay, that was a false start. I'm fixing it now. <laughs> I've moved the boot to this side because I hold the strands with this hand versus the other hand. And I'm gonna get it started. So there is the start of my flies. I did notice on this 
smaller bobbin. I had um, a light to dark kind of on this one too, so we'll see what it looks like. It's gonna barber pull and then... <laughs> I know, glorious. Use a shoe. Okay, it is now Saturday, May 30th, and I have a little bit of spinning to show you. Now, I just wanna preface this. I am no spinning expert. Do not take spinning advice from me. <laughs> I can give you uh, tips and tricks that I know to my own knowledge, but I am no expert by any means. So if you want to follow some great people who spin, uh, Lala from The Knit Girls, she spins amazing. So I'm sure there's some good resources on their channel too. Uh, <laughs> So the fiber I spun was from Into the World and it's called Amusing Antidote and it was four ounces to 4.3. I didn't weigh mine so I don't know exactly how much this is. I might have it on my project page. So last May I started this and this is now two plied. This is what I was uh, plying on with my Andean plying tool that I showed you and I do not think I spun it tight enough. You can see how loose those two plies are, but that's okay. It does look way different though than how I plied the other yarn. Now this yarn, this single I spun mostly within the last month and a half, two months I guess. And I put it, so I had some issues with my Indian bracelet that got a little tangled, I'm not gonna lie. And then when I made my center pool ball with the larger bobbin, I had a lot of issues. I think it kind of kinked up on itself on the inside and then I was having some issues pulling out from the center, but it's done. And I only lost very little um, singles. So don't mind the orange ties. Um, so this barber pulled a lot. I had spun this from light to dark what I had left so the light end and the dark end met up and then it met in the middle kind of. So I am going to have a little bit of gradation um, in this when I knit with it. It's about a sport weight. Oh, I didn't mention this is about 100 yards approximately. This was about 260. So together I have 360. So if I think you take the yardage for four ounces, usually that's probably around a sport weight. So... It's probably a sport weight. I could use my whips per inch tool and um, I might re-skein it again just to get an idea because I've washed it also and whacked it and hung it out to dry. Um, so yeah, it's nice and squishy and soft and it smells really good. So there's that. Again, I am no expert at spinning. So don't, don't take my advice lightly, I guess. I did finish an object. I finished the knitting part. Now again, I have not woven the ends in on this, but it's done. Ready? It's very pretty. I think it's very, very pretty. John thinks it's ridiculous because he's like, it's way too long. <laughs> it's the Three Color Cashmere Cowl by Hohi Locatelli. That's where my color changes are. I'll show you this side. <laughs> And the texture, some lace, and then a little bit of striping again. I'm very happy with it. This is definitely going to be a gift to my mom. Okay, so it is big lengthwise, right? So it's long. So it bunches up a lot. So it's not like a casual cow you might keep on even if you're like in the restaurant. Because like I've worn my smaller cows and I'll keep them on and not take them off if I'm somewhere. This is definitely bulkier around the neck. It's something you're putting on, it's really cold with your jacket and you will probably take it off if you got to somebody's house because the nature. We were out at um, Gunpowder River this morning. So that's a um, big river that runs in Maryland in the county and up in Harford County. And um, so we were playing in that today. So I might be a little flush red. I still have my bathing suit on. But I knew I needed to get this recorded so I could put up the episode today. Should I just put it on? I just put my hair in this clip. 
because I had a bandana on to try to keep it manageable. So yeah, you've seen the picture on the project page. You see her holding it up way above her head, but it's definitely bulky and warm and wonderful. So yeah, here's how that project page picture goes. It's like this. <laughs> Something like that. I can't see what I'm doing, so I hope it's all not crazy. <laughs> um, I'll show it one more time when I block it and weave the ends in and talk about the yarn again on that last time. The only other project I have is the socks by Hip Strings, and I've gotten pretty far. I think I'm like 40 rows in now from the cuff. I'm, I'm done the cuff. And so this end is the green end. It starts at the green end and goes to the black end. So I'm getting a little bit of pulling or flashing there. I think that looks really cool. So I'm, I use my stitch markers after the rib. So I'm 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm probably more than 10 more. So I'm probably at like 55 rows out of a hundred. And then I'm going to start my heel flap. Yeah, so this is moving right along because I took this with me in the car today because it's easy knitting and even Z was like, mom, are you knitting? And I'm like, yeah, she goes, usually only knit when we go on long road trips. This isn't long. And I'm like, yeah, but I can get like 10 rows in on there and back. So I can get like 20 rows done. So 20 rows out of 100 in the leg, that's 20%. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I take this with me. Okay, a little bit of the birthstone cowl. I am a May baby. My birthstone is emerald. I loved the color green since forever, um, so it's perfect. <laughs> now, I know with emeralds, they can be like really light and they can be really dark, depending, I think, just on the clarity. I am not a gemstone expert. <laughs> I'm not an expert on anything. I found two yarns in my stash. Coincidentally, the one yarn is Brooke's yarn from Fully Spun, and she, I'm um, one of the big finished object gifts for this, of course, is that gift card I was talking about. So this is a fingering weight, and her yarn, if you don't know her yarn, her yarn is if you've ever seen, well, I can't, now I'm never going to think of their name. The two ladies that dye the yarn and it changes, it's dyed in the wool and then it's spun. You're all yelling it at me. So I'm not comparing Brooke's yarn to their yarn because you just, I'm not. It's dyed in the wool and spun at a mill. So Brooke controls some of the way it will spin up into the yarn. So this will color change. I'm really excited about this. This one is called Super Green. I think this might be what I end up using for my knit along because it's very, it's got all the greens and it's really pretty. I don't know what to match this up with though, because I was thinking of doing a colorwork cow, the new one that I showed you guys two or three episodes ago. I can't think of what the name of it is, and it's on my phone, and I use my phone to record, so I can pop the name of it down there for what I think I'm going to use it for. It's by Aroha, Aro Aroha Knits. I've listened to her say it on her Ravelry, Ravelry page like four times. I really feel bad if uh, I'm, I know I'm but, butchering it, um, but it's her new shawl cow that can be knit rib to rib this way, or you knit it in a tube and then the tube goes around. Um, I have enough yardage of this for this to be the main color. And then I would probably use a very solid, semi-solid yarn as the contrast color and not do a bunch of other colors because you use three cast on colors uh, contrast colors, I should say, with that cow. But I think I wouldn't do that. I think that I would just do 
because this color changes and it'll be really neat in the actual color work part, the background would be a flat color, which I was thinking like a tan. But I've held tan up to it and I'm not quite sure. I have a tan. So I'm trying to use what I have in my stash. Again, um, trying not to buy a lot of yarn, just in general, because I have stuff in my stash that needs to be used. The other green yarn I have, I have a lot of yarn that has green in it, but it's not all green. And I want, of course, now I'm saying that, and I said 75% has to be knit in the birthstone color. I'm not entering my own cow, but maybe I'll have to change up my object. Maybe I'll just do a shawl with this. It is 440 yards, so it's a lot of yardage and it would be really pretty in a shawl and I haven't knit a shawl in a while. So now I have to rethink that. The whole shawl might be just the, the one color, this skein. The other skein I have, um, Knitting Boutique. They used to have a shop near the BWI airport. I think they're just online. The, the actual brick and mortar store is gone. Um, it even has the address on it. This is, John picked this up for me. It has, it, it almost looks blue in there, which it does have a little bit of hint of blue in it, but I think most of it is green and would work, but it's 67% merino and 33% cashmere and it's 430 yards. And it's called Chesapeake Hydrangea. Nope. Chesapeake, I believe is the, the base. Sorry, hydrangea is the colorway. So, now I don't know. Cause I think this would be really cool in a color work cowl or a color work something, even the yoke of a sweater. Maybe I'll make a shawl with this. That cashmere, that would be quite amazing. I'm torn, I'm torn y'all. So if you wanna comment below what you think I should knit with, that would be awesome. <laughs> or even pattern suggestions, I'll take them. Um, I would like to maybe even knit something I already have in my library, something I've already purchased that I haven't knit yet. Yeah. All right, so that is everything I have to show you. So I've put up all the details again on the Ravelry page. I will be drawing winners from Ravelry only because it's going to be the easiest way. So I apologize if you follow me on YouTube and Instagram, but you do not um, you are not a part of the Ravelry community anymore. Um, so you should just join back up. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm sorry. <sighs> so yeah, so that's how I'm going to end up picking my winners is from there. I think it'll make just ease of keeping everything confined in one space. Um, but I would like to see what you pick. Um, if you post pictures of your yarn using the hashtag again, birthstonecal 2020 that would be really cool. So, all right, that's all I have to show you for today. I'm running low on projects until this is cast on and then John's sweater yarn comes because that's not here yet. And then I'll have two new projects. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, until the next episode, guys, knit happy. Bye.